four, the fourteenth. Just wanted to uh, reiterate that the next target is Israel. Now, targets. Are you serious? Okay, now here's the deal. We had an earthquake in the sea that has caused uh, tremors all along the Israeli coast. It's all about 365 days later. Because then that way they can tell you exactly what they're doing, and then it doesn't come to pass, and then you're supposed to forget that they told you 365 days later. And normally you would forget, unless you go back to your own videos and you remember what they said. And the Temple Mount in Jerusalem was shaking. Now, this isn't the first time this has happened, because when Jesus died on the cross, we know that... So this is what happens this time around on May 14th, 2020. Record it because this it went sideways. It wasn't my purpose. So, so powerful that it literally tore the veil in the temple in half. And all, so there you go. When whoever's playing Christ in the world, when that great earthquake happens, that's how they're going to push it. So, that, so an earthquake happens. I, you know what? Thanks, Paul. Because I, you know, I don't remember these things how in sequence how they go but when you listen to a mount, elite mouthpieces you get to you get more knowledge as to how to how they are going to play out the bible so when christ dies expect a tremendous earthquake literally it's foundation he's walking around in jerusalem after the resurrection of jesus christ well here's what's going on now there was a 4.6 magnitude earthquake that hit yesterday. Tremors were in the ocean, but the damage along the Israeli coast, there wasn't any. Well, here's what's going on now. There was a 4.6 magnitude earthquake that hit yesterday. Tremors were in the ocean, but the damage along the Israeli coast, there wasn't any. So, I mean, yeah, I'm sure the people predicted May 15th that there would be an earthquake. And that's what, that's what this video is back on May 9th, with the earthquake in mind. And then that's exactly what that was, a 4.6, but it wasn't the major catastrophe one that's coming up next. On May 13th. Well, it's not Iran, but it is a battleship with 5,000 men on it. U.S. aircraft carrier diverted to Guam. 5,000 sailors are on board. 3,000 of them. I believe they have the virus. No, uh, they don't. We'll find out, but not all 5,000 are getting tested for it. Fake news. So all 5,000 people could possibly die from this coronavirus in Guam. So I'll be on TV. Fake news, people. It's all fake news. Who's up next? May 2nd, 2019. I still think that Guam is a target to start. It is uh, World War III. To be with Jerusalem, it is now on so, Mr. Tees, are, are you telling us that that next up would be uh, St. Peter's? Pick the Pope? Did he pick the Pope yet? I just, it's like, it's sometimes there's just numbers that comes to my head. And I landed right there, okay, a less than a mile from the United States Embassy, that was last year. less than a mile from the Iraqi Parliament, in the heavily fortified, 5,000 American troops guarding that area could not stop this rocket from coming in. Guys, there are thousands of Iranian proxy this militants. This morning, 5,000 U.S. sailors are on they lockdown. The coronavirus spreads from one of America's largest warships. The first two priorities, one no. is to your security. The second is maintaining mission readiness. At right least now. two dozen crewmen aboard the USS Iran Roosevelt have tested three. positive, raising yeah. concern that the illness could spread throughout okay. the aircraft carrier, uh, again. potentially crippling the crew. The not exactly the whole crew battleship. 
ship is not able to so, carry out its duties. But so a large when I part see of the number military might in the Pacific could be on the pier side for weeks. Culprit. All sailors will now be tested in Guam and I know see we're allowed to leave the ship. Johnson Company Memorial Hospital Skid 3 of 3. I know, it means nothing. It, it, it's just certain. Guys, during a phone call with the president, West Virginia's governor saying they were, quote, right on the edge of catastrophe. We're really a second line of attack. But Trump putting the blame back on the states. The first line of attack is supposed to be the hospitals and the local government and the states, the states themselves. Michigan's governor responding overnight. I've asked repeatedly and respectfully for help. We need it. No more political attacks. You said you stand with Michigan. Prove it. Look, the event's going to happen anyway. It's just a matter of what actual day does it happen. Don't forget that. Back on October 6, 2019. <laughs> Eruption in Alaska. I picked Alaska that had to be the earth with the 10.5 at that time. But now I'm understanding again. It's I, I go back and forth. Look, it's multiple uh, choice. I get three three options to pick from. Most people, you, if you can't even get one option, then you can't. You're not part of the game. But if you get at least three options and you hit one of them. Yeah, then you have a better chance of winning, receiving many gifts and rewards. Part of the script is that the most fenced cities, which is Guam that gets bombed, and then Hawaii that has the volcanic eruptions, and in Alaska that has the uh, earthquakes. Now... Number of cases of coronavirus among the some 4,000 on board the USS Theodore Roosevelt have steadily grown for several days as least. they docked in Guam. The cramped, dense living conditions, a perfect viral incubator. It's disappointing to have him say that. Um, however, I, at the same time, we, I know that that's not the truth. We, I know that that's not the truth. We, I know that that's not the truth. But then later at the White House coronavirus briefing, there was this comment from the Defense Secretary. There seems to be this narrative out there that we should just shut down the entire United States military and address the problem that way. That's not feasible. And so we live and work in, in cramped quarters. That's exactly what they're doing. Whether it's a, uh, an aircraft carrier, a submarine, a tank, a bomber, it's the nature of our, of our business. Those aboard the Roosevelt are now being brought ashore. Groups of sailors will rotate in and out of quarantine on Guam. As many sailors as possible should disembark in the next few days. Those who test negative will be moved into 14-day quarantine in Guam hotels. Those who test positive will be placed in isolation at the U.S. naval base on the island. A core group of about 1,000 will stay on board to be replaced after 14 days by those who've already undergone quarantine. They will maintain the ship's weaponry and nuclear reactors. Now, these five, you 5,000 men that are on there, I don't think, I think you all got tested. It's part of the protocol. But I don't think that you guys actually know that once you got tested, they gave you a false negative. So they're kind of making it, putting fear in your heart, too. Because that's the only way that they can sell it, is by 
truly giving you guys a. I think I meant false positive. Now that I'm rewatching this video, if if you guys are positive, false negative uh, result. You know, unless every single person on the ship is involved and responsible and understands what's going on with this. But I, you know, I, I don't truly know one way or another. I just give them both options out there. Or the third option, this is all real. Everybody has it and it's true. All right, I just figured this part out. Their, the whole purpose is to weaken the military, which is, which is kind of obvious. But when they start shooting the missiles off towards the White House, with uh, Donald Trump being there, towards Philadelphia at Center City, towards New York, that where it'll hit, one rumor will be that the missile hit the water and it caused a great tsunami. The other one will be the guy caused an earthquake out, out there. The other one will be a fallen star hit the ground or a meteor. But it's to weaken our military. That way, when they go and shoot those missiles, we can't stop it. Here's the men and women who work for him ahead of his own career. The case of the Roosevelt raises the question of the operational readiness of the U.S. Navy to right the pandemic. However, the U.S. isn't the only nation facing that question. Well, yeah, it would weaken our Navy, but what about the Chinese Navy? What about, you know, the, the <coughs> Russian submarine port? <coughs> so the Chinese Navy? What about... <coughs> You know, the Chinese Navy. What about, you know, the, the Russian submarine force? So it's going to... Oh, the yellow, little yellow submarine, the Russian, shoots the missiles off. At, another rumor will be that it came from Russia, the submarine that hit the White House and killed Donald Trump for three and a half days. Impact everybody, and, and I think what the United States should be doing is taking the lead now in working with these other countries and say, look, until we deal with this, we can't continue business as usual. U.S. officials, however, insist that were it necessary, the Roosevelt could be fully manned and deployed immediately. Shia Bertansi, Al Jazeera. Virus cases on the USS Roosevelt are multiplying quickly. 23 sailors have now tested positive for COVID-19. As 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us, isolation on the ship is a big challenge. There are roughly 5,000 sailors on the USS Roosevelt right now, and even though the carrier is huge, it's just not designed for isolation. In reality, all those spaces on board the ship are pretty tightly wound. The U.S. meaning the number of infected sailors is now nearly eight times as high. The Roosevelt is getting ready to pull into Guam, then, where the positive cases will be moved off the ship. Sun will rise. I'm still going to stick with this one. From the west back to the east, May 21st. Because it's Agenda 2021. The 20th day of May and the 21st day of May, 2019. Well, it didn't happen last year. Set in New Zealand, three days. Then a the real sun shines on the 24th. 